Hey everyone, it's time for another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about your eyes and sickle cell disease, specifically something called retinopathy. So retinopathy is damage to your retinas, which are actually the back part of your eyes that focus and give you the vision. So in order to understand um, the complication, we need to back up a little bit and talk about how your eyes actually work. So I have this little handout for you. So here is a picture of your eye. So this is what we see, you know, typically when we just look at somebody's eye. So this right here is the side profile. And this is the pupil, which is this black part right here. And the pupil is actually just like a window into the back of your eye. So it opens and closes depending on how much light your eyes need to focus. So if it's a darker room, it'll get bigger to let in more light. And if it's a really bright sunshiny day, then they get really small to let in less light. And so it's actually back here, your retina that is focusing to be able to interpret what you're seeing. So in retinopathy, your retina becomes damaged. Now in sickle cell, you have a much higher risk of having this damage to your retina because of those blockages due to the sickle cell. So we've talked about uh, blockages within your blood vessels and blood vessels run to your eyes as well. And so blockages within the blood vessels leading up to your eye can lead to damage to your retina, which can cause bleeding into the eye and ultimately vision loss and if left completely untreated, blindness. So we're gonna talk about what that looks like and uh, what some of the symptoms are and then what some of the uh, screening things look like based on hematologist recommendations. So first I wanna tell you that there actually is, although everybody living with sickle cell is at risk, there's actually a higher percentage of people that experience this based on the certain type of sickle cell that you have. So people living with hemoglobin SC disease have about a one in three chance or a 33% chance as a child for having rep, experiencing rep, retinopathy. And then it actually goes up to a one in two percent chance um, or 43% actually is what the research shows as an adult. So it's a very uh, common complication for somebody that has uh, hemoglobin SC disease. It also has a higher risk if you have sickle beta zero thalassemia or SB zero, they have a one in 10 chance or 13% chance that they will experience some type of retinopathy. Uh, people with SS or sickle cell anemia have a lower percentage. Oh, as children, it's only about every three children in 100 or 3% will experience retinopathy, but it goes up as an adult and becomes equal with sickle beta zero at about uh, 13%. So um, some of the things that you want to look for are if you have um, blurred vision, if your vision wasn't blurry and it became blurry, if you have floaters, so if you've ever had, if you have things floating around that weren't there before, little spots, sometimes they're colored, that's definitely something that you want to get checked out. If you have uh, streaks or a patch in your vision that all of a sudden um, wasn't there before, so maybe it's hard for you to see out here or there's a line in your vision that wasn't there before. That could be from uh, some damage to your retina that was bleeding into your vision part. Um, if you have reduced night vision all of a sudden, so it becomes harder for you to see at night, any sudden vision loss. And um, another thing that's really important is if you have an eye injury or if you see some bleeding in the sclera, which, sclera, sorry, which is the white part, if you see any of that or you have an eye injury, um, even if those don't feel serious, with sickle cell, they need to be treated as urgent. So urgently getting into your ophthalmologist, which is an eye specialist, or to the ER um, if you're unable to do that. So any of those symptoms. The other thing that uh, hematologists recommend, and it's really important that we, as both patients and parents and loved ones, adhere to is having that annual ophthalmology appointment starting at least at age 10. A lot of doctors do it much sooner, but not the optometrist that's the basic eye doctor that all of us see that might be like Pearl Vision or the Walmart Center. Those aren't the level of eye doctors that people living with sickle cell need to see. They actually need to see an eye specialist. So for instance, if your child or yourself are hooked up with either a children's hospital or wherever the hematologist is located, they can give you a referral to an actual optometrist and eye specialist because the opto the I'm sorry, the ophthalmologist and eye specialist, the optometrist doesn't have the level of equipment needed to see the entire retina at the level of clarity that is needed for sickle cells. So you wanna make sure that you get in there once a year so they can track any, tra track any changes 
and then um, fear not because there actually is treatment so if they do notice any um, damage from sickling in the back of the eyes there is a uh, laser therapy that they can do so the sooner that they catch it the sooner that they can treat it and um, either regain all or most of the vision lost so the longer that you wait the harder it is um, to fix to treat so go to your ophthalmologist once a year and if you saw any sudden changes in your vision, any vision loss, or any eye damage, get to the doctor immediately. Thanks so much. Check us out on the web at hopeforstd.org and post any comments or questions below. Thanks.